I wish I had champagne, but you know, I have nothing in my fridge outside of some pickled jalapeno peppers. Happy New Year, NFL. New league year officially starts today. So, who's playing tonsil hockey with the hottest person in the bar at midnight, and who's left awkwardly eating the reheated spring rolls from the catering warming tray? Bengals! Don't be that guy. We'll get into it. Listen to me. Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall is going to talk about Lamar Jackson. He saw Aaron Rodgers. We'll talk about that as it's all shaken out between the Jets and the Packers. And March Madness is here. We have the great John Rothstein, the only college basketball insider that needs to be on the show to fill us in on everything we need to know for the NCAA tournament. Which team should I throw in with? I'm thinking Marquette. Marquette, Golden Eagles, a little Milwaukee love, a little, I don't know, I'm just thinking about that. Uh, and we will get into all of those details and talk brackets, because I'm doing a bracket. And everyone on Up and Adam should do a bracket. And it all starts right now. There'll be a countdown at 3.59, a nice minute. You gotta find, find you know, somebody to make out with before 4 p.m. That is when the league year officially kicks off uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern. So there's a lot of candidates to, uh, to go and nuzzle, nuzzle up to. 130 plus free agent deals though have already been reported over the past 48 hours that can become official. That's basically what it means. It also means that Lamar Jackson can begin negotiating with teams other than the Ravens. Remember, that's the non-exclusive tag situation. But also remember, Baltimore has a chance to match any potential deal. So if it's New Year's and you're at the bar and you're like, man, I really want to work up the courage to go talk to that person and they're, you know, amazing and they're an MVP and they're great, but why even go talk to them because their ex-boyfriend is just going to walk up and steal them back because they have that potential to do so with one sentence and one moved comma and a checkbook. Do you really want to work up all the nerve, waste the resources to go after that person at the bar, or are you trying to find somebody else? That's sort of the thing that these quarterback needy teams are dealing with when it comes to negotiating or even being interested in or pouring front office resources into any interest in Lamar Jackson. Lamar addressed some of the rumors about those negotiations yesterday, so we'll get into that with Brandon Marshall in a little bit. Lamar Jackson you know, I wonder, I would love to ask him, like, what makes you tweet? So much is said. Good things, bad things, true things, not true things. What makes you attach to one and decide to quote t- tweet it or feel like you have to say your piece? And if that's true, come on the show. Come on with Brandon Marshall and I and maybe uh, talk it through or with somebody that you trust and love. Uh, like him and Mark Ingram should maybe chop it up on their on their podcast, on, do, on his podcast, on his platform, and get us some information so we can root for him, so we can be for Lamar and know what's actually going on. Uh, and, of course, we are here waiting for the Lamar, uh, Aaron Rodgers decision. We had Brian Costello from the New York Post on yesterday, and he kept looking at his phone like it was about to happen. And <laughs> I just feel bad for him this morning because they're still in a bit of a, a holding pattern as far as officialness comes into play. And that's what today's all about. New league years and things can become official. And it may be happening soon. He is set to appear on the great Pat McAfee show at 1 p.m. Eastern today. And you'd have to think it's following an announcement that's made or he loves McAfee and AJ Hawk so much that he decides to announce his future epically on that show. So the trade didn't officially happen between Rodgers and the Packers and the Jets, but we did get a couple of deals to happen yesterday. The Ducks in my pool, they made a deal to at least, you know, hang out for the morning yesterday. But since then, the Giants, these Giants, these Giants right here, everyone's talking about the Jets, by the way, and there's so much like, oh, the Jets are the... Don't forget the Giants are are a team that's getting stuff done. They're the team of New York, in my opinion, right now until this deal gets done and maybe into this uh, next season in the NFC that's watered down without Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. This team that I'm talking about, this playoff team that in a rebuilding year that nobody expected, they dealt the third-round pick they got from Kansas City in that underwhelming, under-the-radar Kadarius Toney deal to the Raiders for newly married tight end Darren Waller. I love this for Daniel Jones. It is a small price to pay for a guy who's one of the most dominant tight ends in the league when healthy. DeMarcus Ware was on our show. He goes, don't get a wide receiver. Cowboys, get a tight end. Tight ends mean everything. And now the Giants land one of the best in the game to do it. When healthy is an asterisk. Underline it. Highlight it, bold it. You guys are filling out your brackets. Keep all those things out. Highlight that part of it because it's got to stay healthy. But it gives New York 
an absolute matchup nightmare that they have been lacking in the passing game. No disrespect to anybody that they've had in there, but it's a huge, huge thing for this squad. And elsewhere in the NFC East, uh, our friend Clarence Hill Jr., he's reporting this morning, speaking of the Cowboys, they are releasing, plan to release, will release when it's all official, Zeke Elliott. They, of course, tagged the electric Tony Pollard a couple weeks ago. They did that early. They made their decision known. Uh, Dallas did take a big swing yesterday. They landed all pro corner Stephon Gilmore, sent him a message. He said he's so excited to get down there uh, and sort of revitalize his career. This is, of course, defensive player of the year, caliber player. He's been there, done that. He's a Super Bowl champion. And it's all in exchange for a fifth round pick. So this tandem of Gilmore and Trayvon Diggs, uh, is it the best this season? Sure, you've got Jalen down there, and you've got uh, maybe a revitalized Xavier Howard, both of them coming off down years for whatever reason. But this could be one of the best tandems in Dallas this season. So while the Eagles, they've taken a few hits this offseason, it looks like the rest of this NFC East, they are loading up to make a run at the crown. Do we have Mr. Brandon Marshall? Available? Oh, it's good to know. I appreciate the communication, you guys. Thank you guys for tweet the show at Up and Adam Show as we bring in a all pro receiver, the mastermind, the maestro, the architect of the I am athlete media empire. And I do believe, outside of you know, a shaman, a guru, and an energy healer, the last person to probably speak to Aaron Rodgers in public, our good friend Brandon Marshall. Hello. Oh my goodness. Hey, if we don't have friends like you <laughs> to big you up and just speak life over you, then you don't have a real friend. I love how you just intro me. I love it. <laughs> Brandon, mastermind. Brandon Marshall, I love it. You you are killing it. From hanging out to Rihanna to talking to Rihanna. And then I'm watching like that you killed Super Bowl in such an epic way. I was texting you about that. Then I go on vacation and I pop back up onto the scene. I get back on Instagram and it's you and Aaron Rodgers. Like you headed out to Orange yeah. County. You're like, I'm going to be there for this. I know what I'm going to get. You're looking him in the eyes. You spoke yeah. to him this past weekend and he played it close to the best on camera. But I know he told you something as far as where he's leaning and what's going on. What did he tell you? No, honestly, we thought we were going to break the news this weekend, or we were preparing for that. That was myself and Jordan Palmer, the RX3 guys, uh, through their second celebrity flag football charity event. They raised over $1.5 million. You had Josh Allen wow. and Sam Darnold um, and so many other quarterbacks out there, a couple guys in the draft uh, that came out to support and show love in a major way. Joe Burrow was supposed to be there, but his flight got redirected. Uh, so, yeah, we were out there and um, we had an opportunity to sit down with A-Rod. And, and, and there was a lot of people there that thought that A-Rod had the deal done this weekend with Woody. And that Saturday was going to be the day that he made that announcement. I, 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 did, I didn't believe it, right? Because what, what felt right to me was uh, him actually going on Pat McAfee's show uh, and doing yes. it. You know, you've been doing this for two years now, uh, once a week going on Pat's show. That's your boy. You guys have done some special things together. FanDuel, obviously a part of that as well, giving them that moment. Um, today feels right. Today feels like the right moment. It feels like the right platform. Um, and it's Aaron Rodgers' style. It's going to be laid back and chill. Okay, I would say this. There's two things that stood out to me this weekend. One, uh, the way he threw the ball. There's no more discussion for Ooh. me. I'm not debating it. I'm not arguing it with anyone else uh, in the sports world. He is the best thrower of the football. I don't give a damn if he's throwing to seven-year-old kids out there. I saw this guy, K, drop back, throw a no-look pass. But you're going to say, Brandon, a no-look pass, we've seen that several times from him and Ryan Fitzpatrick, Patrick Mahomes. Oh. That's easy. A lot of quarterbacks are doing it now. Matthew Stafford, no, K. I've never seen a quarterback drop back and throw a 45, 50-yard bomb looking left and throw it right. I've never seen it before. It was magical. It was like watching a ballerina. The second thing that I that stood out to me was how chill and how poised he is, Kay. He's really a dude that he sits back. Uh, he doesn't say much. He cracks jokes here and there. So he's definitely different. So I, I love his personality. And I think, you know, people outside looking in, you may get it misconstrued. And I asked him that question. I asked him if he – did he feel like he was, you know uh, – um, you know, misrepresented in the media. And he said, yeah. He said, yeah. Now you talk to him 
I Am Athlete podcast is where everybody needs to go. You guys are on top of everything and really a step ahead of everyone on everything. And Matt, uh, yes, uh, Rogers will be on with McAfee this afternoon, usually a Tuesday appearance, making it a Wednesday appearance. We don't know when that announcement will come, if it'll be on the show. No, it's not. So keep your eyes. No, no. Let me, it'll be on the let show. Me, let me correct you. Let me correct you. Okay. You said that we're always a step ahead. No, it's Kay Adams. Because I see what you've been doing these last three, four months on the show. All these big name people, Sean Payton. How the hell are you getting Sean Payton on your show? Like you. So there's Kay, there's Up and Adams, then there's Pat McAfee, and then there's I Am Athlete. So we're, I'm cracking that top three. Listen, the only chance I have of running into Rihanna is last night I went to Giorgio Baldi, which she's at every week on TMZ, and so I thought maybe I can get a sight of Riri getting herself some Cacio Pepe. You straight up, like, <laughs> found her rehearsal vibes before the Super Bowl halftime show. Don't even start with me. What we need mm-hmm. to do, and we've talked about this, we got to join forces as we do here on this show and do some other cool stuff together. But let me ask you a little bit more about Aaron Rodgers. Here's what's confusing to me. He goes on McAfee every week and he talks about wanting to win a Super Bowl. And that's prevalent and important. It's defended and it's not about MVPs, it's about Super Bowls. I'm not convinced the Jets are the place to go do that over where he is in Green Bay just because of the, well, just really just the conference talent is a big thing. You're in the NFC. It's an easier path for you. The AFC East, The AFC East is building up. They're great. You got to go through Buffalo. And there's just the chemistry. Not everybody can do the Tom Brady thing. And Tom Brady, by the way, went from a loaded AFC and went to the NFC and went to the NFC South, where it's an easier path for him to t- have that happen. Does he have a bet? How much of a better chance does he have to win a Super Bowl with a loaded Jets roster, a top five defense, which I understand, over Green Bay or another team? Has it, a, uh, I mean, some of the best chances out there? Right. If I'm a betting man, I'll go on FanDuel Sportsbook ASAP. And as soon as he signed, mm-hmm. I'm putting all my money on the Jets to win it. First, Kay, that was one of the most disrespectful things I've ever heard you say on your show. Right. Like, how dare you come out here on your show and talk about the Jets that way? Oh, I don't think it's the best part, the, the best scenario for I'm him just trying to bait going you. to the Jets. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they got a top five defense, Kay. K, I've never been mad. I'm smiling right now, but deep down, I'm really mad at you. It's hard to get mad at K Adams, yeah. but I am. I, I got to express myself. I'm mad at you right now. I can't believe that you would say yeah. that. Top five defense, K. And whether you like it or not, believe it or not, defense does win championships, right? So I like what they're doing there. That is the strength of this team. What you need on the other side is you need someone who understands um, situational football. You need someone more of like a manager, mm. right? You need a game manager, a game day manager, right? That's what a, a great defense needs. So not not only do you have a guy who understands situational football at the highest level, one of the best to ever do it, uh, one of the most clutch players ever, but he's also a playmaker, right? Like we, we don't even need to debate that. You know, back-to-back MVPs, a guy can make every single throw on the field. So not only do you have a guy that can come in and manage any situation. You have a guy that can come in and make any play, any moment. Remember the Hail Mary against Detroit? These are the type of plays mm-hmm. this guy is accustomed to making, right? We've seen this for 19 years. So I think that you have a guy, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to come in and throw for 5,000 yards yeah. to get it done. This is this is going to be true complimentary football. Coaching staff is awesome. And I disagree with you. I don't think it goes through Buffalo. On paper, it goes through Buffalo. But Buffalo, to me, is imploding. Buffalo will not be the same. Now, will they be competitive? Absolutely. You lose Leslie Frazier. Leslie Frazier is not there. Your defensive coordinator is gone. Okay? You still have challenges, right? Are they going to get another wide receiver? What are they going to do in the running game? I don't like how it ended there. I saw Josh Allen this weekend as well, uh, and I asked him the question, how do you slay dragons? And he looked at me and he said, me. Right? So that's what it's going to take. It's going to take Josh Allen playing Aaron Rodgers type level football in the biggest moments this year to actually knock off the Jets. I will say this. To clarify for Twitter and Taylor, who's going to cut this off, it's less about the Jets, who I would love to see win a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. It's more about the competition. You mentioned Buffalo. You think they're imploding. I think they have a ton of cap space that they have not, they're not done. Buffalo's not done making moves. We saw a huge move that they made last year with Von Miller. They're not done. They know their window. They know they're contending. The question becomes going and making the decision with the end of my career to go to the Jets in the AFC. It's not through Buffalo. It's also, are you better than Cincinnati? 
are you better than Kansas City? Those are the That's questions. Right. You could argue that Green, Green Bay, with, even without a top five defense, but a good defense, was the, you could argue at certain points, the best team would be potentially one of the mm-hmm. better teams in the NFC. I just think it's a, it's a tough path, and I hope it works out. This is KD going to the, the Suns, K. This is what this is, okay? This is KD mm-hmm. going to the Warriors back then. Well, no, I don't want to say the words because I don't want to get cru- I don't get roasted uh, on Twitter. But <laughs> this is definitely KD going to the Suns for sure. It's easy. It's simple. This hopefully doesn't turn out to be uh, KD, uh, Kyrie, and James Harden all going to the Nets where nothing gets done. People are hurt. They play eight games together yeah. in three years. Um, but no, Aaron Rodgers going to this team. Garrett Wilson, K. K. Garrett okay. Wilson. Yeah. And then you go get Lazard, your boy. Reese. And then you go get a safety. Is he getting safety. Odell? Should Odell go there? Or where should Odell go quickly? Because we got to take a break. You're wearing them. You're wearing, you're wearing the sweater. I keep telling you this, K. Every time you, every time we come on the show, you ask me the same question. Where should Odell go? Well, and I never keep happens. saying the same thing. Where's Odell? I keep saying the same thing. Odell is in Phoenix right now. He's sitting courtside watching the Suns, also working out with his guy, Nick, his trainer. But he needs to make his way to the other side of the country. He needs to go to New York. Don't go to the Jets. Go to the Giants. Everybody want to see it. Makes sense. Every, everybody want to see it. We keep talking about it. It's not. It doesn't keep it. I would love I mean, he's on the wish list for Aaron Rodgers. Sala Joe Douglas, they've got his name. I'd like to see him back in New York on the other team. Then he can be the boy who comes home, but he's the villain because he goes to the other team. That's no, together don't, don't be the villain. Don't be the Super villain. Bowl. Be loved. There's only a, a handful of All right. athletes that's beloved in New York forever. He can be one. They are rushing me to break. There is breaking news. Darius Slay out. So there's that to talk about. We'll get to the other side. Lamar Jackson. I want your thoughts on that. The Bears. People are really excited about the Bears. I have a feeling you're going to have something to say to those Chicago fans after (laughs) this. Odell, make it easy. Got to the Super Bowl, couldn't make it happen. The Eagles parting ways with Darius Slay, who had such an incredible season. The cornerback market, very interesting. Listen, Atlanta, they had the second most money going into this thing. They've got a stud corner already. They add Jesse Bates. In free agency, I wouldn't be surprised if they get him to sort of bolster what's going down uh, on Atlanta. But I know those Lions fans want Darius Slay back real bad. So maybe he ends up back home. That would be really fun as well. But we've got uh, Brandon Marshall here. I am athlete, media, empire. And we got to get to Lamar Jackson here because we haven't talked about him since he was slapped with that. Slapped. Just slapped with that non-exclusive franchise tag. Nobody wanted Mm -hmm. to see it. And he, he was on Twitter yesterday. Um, responding to some things, addressing Adam Schefter's report that he was offered $200 million fully guaranteed as a deal. And he responded with this TikTok gif like, "Uh uh-huh. Okay. And then he said, yes, like it's not true. 133 divided by three years, fully guaranteed. But I need an agent followed by this. People throw poop at the wall and hope it stick. What do you make of what Lamar is saying yesterday? Where do you stand with this today? Well, I mean, let's just get straight to it. If you see the hat, the thing that he put out on TikTok, yes. that means cap. But if you look at it, you pay <laughs> close attention, there's like five, six caps there. So it's cap, 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 okay. cap. So Lamar is saying that uh, Adam Schefter, who I love, who's awesome, he's a friend, been covered, he covered me my entire career, Denver guy. I would say Adam potentially got this wrong or, you know, this is just a little cat and mouse game that Lamar is playing with the media. But, you know, Lamar wants $200 million guarantee. um, And that's what Lamar should get. Right. And I think he deserves that. Like this whole conversation, Kate, around, you know, Deshaun Watson, you know, we that's we we can't go off of that. That was a desperate team. That was a desperate organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, To me, that's cat. Right. Because there's also probably another team or two out there if Lamar was free that would be desperate, you know, that would go out there and do whatever they need to do to get this done. Right. It makes sense. There's three quarterbacks with a winning percentage over 700 percent in their career. There's Patrick Mahomes. uh, It's it's Lamar Jackson. And I want to say maybe even Aaron Rodgers. Right. Guys who are still active. Why wouldn't you pay this guy? Isn't that the isn't that the name of the game is to win? You just want to be in position. You're not going to win it all the time, 
But if a guy gives you an opportunity to win every single game, why wouldn't you just give it to him? $200 million, you lock him up for the next five, six years, why not? It makes a lot of sense. But, Kay, there's a bigger conversation here. We can discuss it next time you have me on the show. But I feel like there's some a little collusion going on right here. It reminds me of the 1993 situation where we introduced uh, uh, free agency, when we introduced the first tag. In 1993, you know what happened? You had Mr. B, Mr. B, the, the, the owner, ex-owner of the yeah. Denver Broncos, said, I can't lose John Elway. There's no way I can lose John Elway. So he flies to New York from Denver, Colorado, walks into the league office, goes up to the 50th floor, and he says, you know what, guys, we have to figure this out. And boom, here's the introduction of the, the franchise tag. They didn't think that this was going to live with the NFL for 20, 30 years. They didn't think that. This is a terrible deal for the players. It takes the leverage away from the players. So when we're talking about negotiation, we talk about fair bargaining, you can't get you can't be an organization that says, you know, we're going to lock this player up. He has no more leverage, okay, because it benefits us. Well, the guy played throughout his contract. He, he did what he's supposed to do. Now he's up. Let the man go. You pay him or let him go somewhere else. I don't like the franchise tag, and I think it's time for the players to really fight back against this franchise tag. It has no place in our game. You've said it on this show before when this is happening. That was before the non-exclusive tag was given. You said it on your platform and several others. Does he land somewhere else now, do you think? Mm, I was looking at the Jets. I was looking at the Jets, right? Like if, if Aaron Rodgers retired and how he may retire on our buddy show today at one, I don't think that will happen. I think he will go to the Jets. But if they didn't land Aaron Rodgers, I felt like the Jets should go all in. Um, that was one of the teams that made a lot of sense to me. Now it doesn't because I truly believe He's going to end up with the Jets. Um, yeah, I think there's teams out there that should definitely take a run at Lamar. I don't care. I don't care if you think you have your quarterback. If you don't have Josh Allen or Joe Burrow or Patrick Mahomes on your team, you should be looking at Lamar Jackson. There's all all of these so are teams. They, are they lying? Because there's why are teams saying? I know you're, I, I I see your point on the franchise tag and the the slippery slope with it. Why did these teams come out? and say that they're not pursuing him. You got to go back. A lot of this stuff, you can find these same storylines in history. That's why I went back to 1993. You know, that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the introduction of free agency. That was the, intro the introduction of the franchise tag. And Mr. B couldn't lose John Elway. John Elway was up. So the league and the owners got together and created something that, that, that would favor their owner. So it's the same thing. You do, do we not think collusion exists in the NFL or in corporate America or other leagues? 100% exists. I know. Go back teams, to 2011. Teams want to win. Teams want yeah, to teams win. Want to they win. have to win or they're irrelevant. So the, the Falcons, collusion, Kashmuzin, they should take a run at him, right? Like they need to be relevant. They no. need to go to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. Like they're, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, Kate. So this is this is this is this is what I have to say to that. I, I agree with you. Absolutely, teams want to win, but also those thirty-two owners. What makes the NFL powerful are those owners operating at one when they need to operate as one. So you don't think they have relationships? These guys are on yachts together, private planes together. They're renting out islands. They have league meetings. You say, hey, let's 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 yeah. sit here and talk. We got this Lamar Jackson situation. We can't make this a thing where that that our superstars of the NFL goes out there and they can demand guaranteed contracts. And now that puts all of us in you know in a terrible position. We can't go off of the Deshaun Watson contract. They should have never done that. This owner shouldn't even be in the league. Haslam, do we even actually like him? Why would he even do this? And then they sit together and they say, you know what? All right, we're we got your back on this one, right? So. I don't know the type of conversations that they have. I'm not, yeah. I, I'm just speculating. I'm just outside looking in saying that owners getting together to collude is a thing. It's a thing. But that means that he's okay. staying in Baltimore. Potentially it could, it could, but, but where, who's that one team K that can put that poison pill in when you have these conversations, right? When you understand like, okay, non, non-exclusive, what does non-exclusive mean that another team can sign them? It also means that another team will have to give up two first-round picks. Lamar Jackson is worth three or four first-round picks, okay, at this phase of his career, right? So if a team yeah. comes out 
and they actually put something in the contract knowing that the Baltimore Ravens can't match it, they you can see Lamar Jackson in another situation. So there is a team or two out there outside of that initial list, right, that came out and said, oh, Atlanta Falcons, we don't want Lamar Jackson. The Carolina Panthers, we don't want Lamar Jackson. There's about four or five teams. That doesn't mean that there yeah. still isn't a team out there that can make a move that don't agree with the, the little let, circle let that, of trust that they put together. I like what you're saying. If you're Lamar, what do you, you know, we had Thomas Dimitrov, 12-year GM. I basically asked him if he had an agent, would this have gone a different way? And he said yes. And there's this huge discussion of you shouldn't need an agent. We've seen players get contracts without agents before successfully. You can look at the Bobby Wagoners. You can look at other sports. You can look at whatever. You shouldn't need an agent. Do you think if he had an agent, this would be happening? Uh, I, I do agree with him uh, that it, it would have things would have uh, transpired a little differently, but not for the same reasons, right? Lamar Jackson and Miss Felicia Jackson, they're more than capable to hiring and firing mm -hmm. a team, meaning, hey, I'm going to bring in a COO, I'm going to bring in uh, an attorney, I'm going to bring in uh, someone outside consultant to help us in these areas, whether it's from marketing to contract negotiation to strategy to whatever it is. So um, I think it's because of, you know, it's it's disruptive. I think that it could be, uh, you know, counterproductive for the, on the league side, uh, you know, counterculture, uh, having a player to as at this magnitude come out and represent themselves and get exactly what they want. So I just think there's some bias there. I truly believe that Lamar Jackson is more than capable of looking at the market saying that here's where Aaron Rodgers is. Here's where Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. is. Here's what here's where Dak Prescott and all the other quarterbacks are. And this is where I should be or this is where I want to be and fight for that. This is this this is nothing but negotiating. That's it. That's it. The language is easy. Yeah. You can look at Patrick Mahomes' contract with the with the NFLPA, sit down with them, and say, look, what's a fair deal for me? We as players, we already have uh, agents. We don't even need agents. The NFLPA can represent us. When I was going through my mm. third contract with the Chicago Bears, my agent, Kennard McGuire, got on the phone with the NFLPA, the attorneys there, and we went through every single uh, wide receiver contract in the top 10. We also looked at all the language. We went through strategy together. And they're some of the most, they're the brightest minds. There's no one that knows right. these, these labor laws and these conditions better than uh, them. Like, they're the ones that put this in place. They're the ones negotiating with the NFL. So I'm saying all to say that even if Lamar said, you know what, I'm going to let the NFL PA help me out here. He's still going to be good. Right. You don't need to go get a, a Tom Condon. You don't need to go hire a WME or a CAA. You don't need it. But if I mean, then you have to make savvy. all these decisions. Sure. And I'm not I like that you're saying they're capable of it. But the truth is, now he's got this crazy decision to make. Does he demand a trade? Does he play it out on the tag and take his chances next year? There's a lot going on. So, some um, consulting or advisement or conversation, which I, I actually think Lamar and Miss Felicia are probably having, it's just an interesting debate and sort of a precedent for the future and what it looks like. Um, really quick, we have one sentence answers here for these last one. Would you either want to talk about bears or do you want to talk about Vanderpump rules? Your call. I don't even know what a Vanderpump rule is. You choose. I knew that Let's was go. true. <laughs> okay, so we'll really quickly, Bears. <laughs> Bears fans are getting super excited, right? They're they're genuinely starting to lure me in. Ryan Poles doing his thing. He's got a lot of money. There's new leadership there. They land DJ Moore, Tremaine Edmonds. Now we're talking. We're rebuilding. Listen. This team that you want Odell to go to, this was a rebuilding team last year with new leadership. Nobody expected him to do diddly squat, and then they went to the playoffs. Could this going. be that, or should I be should I be tempering my expectations? Or are the Bears the new Giants? No, the Bears, they're not only the new Giants. <laughs> they're going to be better. They're going to have a better okay. season than the Giants had last year. Okay, outside of, okay. The, wow. outside of the Denver Broncos, I truly believe the Chicago Bears are going to be the biggest team out there, organization that turns around it within one year. It's going to be a f phenomenal year for the Chicago Bears. 
Mm -hmm. love it. And Aaron Rodgers, see ya. Get the hell out of here, Aaron Rodgers. See ya. (laughs) Don't send us postcards. You can unfollow me on Instagram. See ya. Get out of here. All right, Brenda Marshall, we love you. Uh, we'll, We'll talk to you down the line. Always so insightful and incredible. You are the absolute best. Uh, and we got to see each other soon. We got to see yes, each other good. soon, Brandon. Tell them how you stood me John up. Rothstein on the show. It's an art form. It's a balance. You must be logical and remember that only one time ever has a 16 beaten a one seed. But also be bold enough to select a double digit seed to make the sweet 16. This gentleman is quite a character. We are excited to welcome on College Basketball Insider for CBS Sports, host of College Hoops Today. That's a podcast I will be listening to today as I fill out my bracket and through this entire tournament. Please welcome a FanDuel family member. I love meeting family. John Rothstein, how are you? Awesome, Kay. Good to be with you. I know you're busy. You're in Dayton. I know you want to get down to business here, but I'm a bit of a novice when it comes to this. I think last time I filled out a bracket... Uh, I was taking like Jägermeister and Goldschlager shots back at Mizzou. And I hear Mizzou is good this year, so we can dig into that. Uh, give me the big storyline going into March Madness. If you were to give me the one thing that makes me sound smart at the old water cooler at work. The parity that exists in the field and how balanced the field is. This is wide open an NCAA tournament that I think I've seen in nearly 20 years covering college basketball at the national level. So I think as much as obviously we want to forecast and prognosticate what's going to happen, it is significantly harder because of the wide open landscape of the sport. And it really reminds me of the 2010-2011 season. Now, what happened that year? UConn won a national championship as a three seed, but the Husky finished the regular season that year just nine and nine in the big east in the final four uconn played kentucky a four seed and on the other side of the bracket butler an eight seed played vcu in 11 if you told me that in a couple of weeks when i get to houston (laughs) there will be no one or two seeds in the final four i would obviously be able to believe it it's that type of a year I we love I love that. That means I can't go wrong in how I want to pick my bracket, which is exactly. bad, which mascot sounds more, most fun to me. Like that's always how the you know Betty and accounting wins these pools. Uh, okay, you have your Rothstein isms, which are viral. You make T-shirts. You have such an incredible, emphatic cult following, and you have you know this guy has more plays than Broadway. Death taxes, Matt Painter, uh, more adjustments than a chiropractor. We sleep in May, but you started with this. This is March thing, and as I understand it, you would tweet it anytime anything happened and everyone's like who is this guy what is this and then it sort of gained steam and everybody started loving it can you define what this is march means well i think it was really encapsulated by what you know we all witnessed last night in dayton just march moments obviously coming to the forefront and i think when you see obviously the pageantry that exists in March, the drama that exists in March, and the inner feeling that you get in your stomach like we had last night when Pitt and Mississippi State were trading haymakers like they were Ali and Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle. This is obviously what I think, you know, March is, and that's why I think it resonates. And one of the things I found, you know, obviously in years, obviously on social media, I'm sure you have too, less is more. So it's three words, it's one statement, but it's a statement that resonates in the holiest month of the year. All right, you've got this thing down, obviously. Have you workshopped Rothsteinisms for this season? Is there one for this, uh, this March Madness situation that you want to roll out there right now? Rothsteinisms cannot be forced. Rothsteinisms have oh. to be organic. So now we're in a situation where, for all intents and purposes, you know, we always have to be mindful that you can't force something. You can't just throw something out there. It has to be <laughs> stick. It has to be authentic. <laughs> We love to hear that from you. Okay, let's do this. Uh, People love uh, a Cinderella story. We love underdogs. Can you hook me up, as I have not filled out my bracket yet, with some names of teams, even players, that I should have on my mind? Well, I think the one thing you want to look at is the storyline with Purdue K and Zach K and Zach Eady. And this, to me, is, I think, a big storyline for the NCAA tournament because Purdue is in a scenario right now where it's a Final Four bust NCAA tournament for Purdue. Now, why am I saying that? 
Think about the heartache that this program has had mm-hmm. over the last five years. 2018, they're in a situation where they have a Final Four caliber team. Their 7-2 center, Isaac Haas, suffers an elbow injury. They lose to Texas Tech in the Sweet 16. 2019, the infamous game against Virginia where they have a lead late in the Elite Eight but lose when Mamadi Diakite makes that shot at the buzzer for Virginia. Virginia goes on and wins a national title. Last year, you have Jaden Ivey, a lottery pick. You have Travion Williams, and of course you have Zach Eady, and you lose to St. Peter's in the Sweet 16. So I think given the landscape of college basketball, given the fact that you have the most dominant force at the five that I've ever covered in 20 years covering the sport nationally in Zach Eady, the consensus national player of the year, anything less than a trip to the final four will be a major wow. disappointment for Purdue's fans, its coaches, its alumni. Oh my gosh, I'm like, a, my, I have goosebumps from even just thinking about that. I'm going to keep uh, an eye on Purdue and all of that. Uh, are you like this with everything? I hear uh, from your representation and people who know you that you're just an encyclopedia like no other. And you're spitting out names and you know small facts about these teams, the, the underdogs, the favorites going into this. Is, is this everything for you? Like, do you do this about pop culture and hobbies or is it just your passion for this tournament? No, I am a one sport person. I'm never going to be somebody who obviously, you know, has a coffee with my agent, even though I've never had a co- cup of coffee. I've never had a cup of coffee. I've never had a glass of wine and I've never played golf. I, heard. I also, I also, you know, for a long time, I've never been to Europe, but my wife and I took an amazing trip, 18 days last summer, three different countries, 18 days and 18 pounds later, I was home. But maybe we'll get to that during our appearance next week. So I can talk to you about how good the bread in France is. Anyway, I'm wait, never wait, wait, going wait. to. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Puny, yeah. or what is it called? Whatever, wherever you, Puny, or wherever Denzel Puny. Washington went. I watched the clip with part of my take. I watched it this morning. Yes. Did you yes. go to that place that offers three course meals in Portofino and order the sheet lasagna for all three meals, which is a move that only an Oscar winner legend can make? No question, but I will say this. I thought that the spaghetti and the, with the white clam sauce was better because we were near the water than the lasagna with obviously the pesto and the lasagna sheets. I thought that that was a better pasta, but the <laughs> pastas there are just endless. But I'd say the real thing that stood out to me over my trip to Europe was just the quality of all the bread products in France. We didn't expect to go to <laughs> France, but two friends of ours were getting married at a chateau in Le Mans, which is three hours outside of Paris. Oh. So we went to Paris and we found this unbelievable hotel overlooking the Seine and the Eiffel Tower. And we just went there every day at like five o'clock. And the, the quality of the bread at this bar was so good. I de- like when I think about like when people say, what's your happy place? It would probably be to be, you know, at the, at Cheval Blanc overlooking the Seine and the Eiffel Tower, probably working on my it's Big East for scene. the next season. It's yes. your one scene. I think you went to Greece on this trip. I was I was listening listening intently. I could not believe that you'd never been to Europe. Uh, been what here. was the what was the one seed moment from that trip? Like what was the who was the champion? If you were to make a bracket of all those incredible moments. And by the way, way to go on your first trip to Europe. I think mine was like going to visit Big Ben in the torrential downpour of London. You're in a chateau yeah. an hour out of Paris. I love I love Paris. Paris, I would go back to. I think it's an unbelievable place to go for a long weekend. But when you combine the food and the freshness of the food plus the Amalfi Coast, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, the 1992 Duke team that went back to back with Leitner, Hurley and Grant Hill. Wow. Oh, my God. See, you're the callback for you. I can't even I can't even keep up. So, listen, I'm looking for a team to to love in this tournament. My squad here, my producers, they're really trying to get me to go with uh, Penny Hardaway, Memphis Tigers. They like that. Great story. All of that. I was thinking of rolling with and not just because I saw Dwayne Wade recently and talked to him about Adam Lefko and how much I love him. I was thinking Marquette. Milwaukee, okay. my sister went there. They just won. They're on fire. They were underrated, and then they over, you know, they, they've done really well against top teams, as I understand it. Who's the team I should go to? I like teams that are underdogs, that have a lot of upside. I like fast teams. I like a passionate head coach. 
the less you know about college basketball, the better you're going to do in your bracket. The more you know about college basketball, the more of a reason there is to have kerosene next to your bracket because you might want to burn it by Thursday or Friday. And in this landscape of college basketball, it is going to be as chaotic a three weeks as I think we've ever seen. You don't know where the ups upsets are coming from, Kay, but do you hear that? They're out there. All right, that's what you're saying. All right, um, you call, what do we want to do? We wanted to do, uh, okay, this is another thing that I read about you and I heard about you, my producer said, is that you are an 80s movie fanatic. Like, so you're, yes. that's that's where you live. You know everything about the tourney and you know all about 80s cinema. So, well, true, true story, um, true, true, true story. You, okay. True story. Tell when me. I was an aspiring broadcaster at Ithaca College, I just wanted to live in New York. I wanted to live in sports media. So when I would have idle time, I would regularly watch Cocktail, Wall Street, and The Secret of My Success just to dream about <laughs> being somebody who was like a young professional in Manhattan. That is amazing. And I will tell you, on Radio Row this year, where I did my show for Super Bowl week, I fell in love with a group of boys from Ithaca College. And they had to share a five by eight table with Syracuse their rival in broadcasting. And I just kept bringing every star I could think of over there to talk to them. So I'm a huge, we have, we have a good bond here. I'm a huge Ithaca College supporter. Okay, I'm gonna, going to give you a team in the tournament and I'd like you to try to give me a favorite movie or a film that might personify them, okay? Okay, yep. Alabama. Alabama, uh, okay, go ahead. Cocktail. <laughs> okay, why? I mean, Alabama, with the style of play they have, they shoot a lot of threes, they play fast pace. It's like one big party. Okay, I like it. They're the number one overall seed, second best odds to win the championship, and they've never won a championship Never been to a Final Four. Men's basketball. Wow, never been to yeah. a Final Four. Well, never I wish our researcher four. was as good as John Rothstein on our show here. All right, let's move on to UConn. So UConn, dark horse favorite, as I understand it, to win this thing. Mm -hmm. UConn would be Rambo, and I'll tell you why, because Dan Hurley lives a lot like Sylvester Stallone in Rambo, too. He's day by day. <laughs> that movie poster just makes me laugh. I could look at that all day. They won four NCAA tournaments, and they're playing in the West region, which is the toughest, right? Mm -hmm. That is the region yeah, of okay. Brands. See, I, know, and I you... know a thing or two. There you go. Duke. Duke is going to be Wall Street because, you know, I kind of see almost like a Michael Douglas is to Charlie Sheen what Mike Krzyzewski might be to John Shire. <laughs> and even though, you know, people say, well, are you going to be the next Coach K? John Shire can be only John Shire. And if you remember in one of the final scenes in Wall Street in Central Park, Charlie Sheen said to Michael Douglas, I guess I'm just Bud Fox. As much as I wanted to be Gordon Gecko, I'll always be Bud Fox. My goodness, you are crushing this segment. They made the Final Four last season, as you just alluded to. They've got no Coach K this year. And it's uh, the team that everyone just always loves to hate. I don't follow college shows, but I know everybody is. My brother went to Michigan State. We hate Duke. Every, everybody is. We hate Duke. That's what it is. How about, last but not least, the number one seed. They've never won the tournament. And the movie Hoosiers is about Indiana University. Rival school. Go with Purdue on this one. I'm going to go with Hoosiers for Purdue, and Indiana fans are not oh. going to like that. But if you look at oh. the way Purdue plays and the brand of basketball that Matt Painter has made synonymous with this program, you know, no label is better associated with the Boilers than that label from a cinematic perspective. But like I said for Purdue, there is no in-between. You're either going to the Final Four in Houston or the season's a massive disappointment. Want to know why? Because this is March. Yeah. I love it. Are you a superstitious guy? Are you watching these games? Are you a guy who has to like, do the same thing during all this? Any any of that? Well, well, what did I think Aristotle said it? We are what we repeatedly do. Greatness is not then by accident, but rather by habit. I think that best personifies me. Wow. John Rothstein, ladies and gentlemen, catch him on CBS Sports all throughout March. And hopefully uh, we will have you back before the madness is over, my friend. Anytime. We sleep in May. All right, thank you for the time and the Rothsteinisms and for the recommendations for my Portofino uh, Amalfi Coast trip this week. And we appreciate it. We'll be back after this. Okay, this just in. Big thanks to John Rothstein. Big thanks to Brendan Marshall for hanging out on our show today. But uh, Shefty is saying that former number one overall pick Baker Mayfield, gosh, I remember being on the floor.
when he was drafted, and it was a huge shocker when he goes to the Browns, then he goes to the Rams, and there were a little stint at Carolina between then. Um, reached an agreement today on a one-year deal worth up to eight. Point five. Could we bring that tweet back up there? I wasn't quite ready reading it. Uh, and this is breaking news to me, so I don't have it. 8.5 million per source is Mayfield. Now in line to be Tom Brady's successor. I like this because this has been the connection all along for Baker Mayfield. A lot of talk about him going to Tampa and doing his thing there. Uh, and they've got very little wiggle room with money. They would love to bring back some of their free agents. They've got tough decisions to make. Uh, and I think we've got Hamilton here. You've been following this since it broke while I was talking a little college hoops because, you know, that's what I do. I talk <laughs> college hoops and the tournament now, apparently. Uh, yeah. But I like this fit because it's, because it's a low-risk, high-reward. I don't know about their run game and what they plan to do there to help support him, but they simply didn't have the money, and this is the best they could do, and this is a nice team-friendly deal for Baker, who's got something to prove. Yeah, he's got something to prove, and he's going to have a ton of talent around him because he's still got mm -hmm. Mike Evans. He's still got Chris Godwin there. And as you talked about a little earlier with Brandon, this NFC South is going to be wide open with Baker at quarterback. I thought, you know, once he went to the Rams, I thought he did a decent job there last year. Obviously, we saw that big comeback against the Raiders that he led. He showed he still got something, and – um yeah, the, that NFC South is very much up for grabs. And as you said, too, the Bucks have a lot to figure out. The Levante David situation, they have a lot of guys they have to, you know, figure out how they're going to bring them back. And this is a team-friendly deal that's going to help them do that. Uh, you know, he was, I think he was, I wasn't, since, since uh, San Francisco kicked their tires on him, too, didn't they? There was potentially some of that, but uh, you know, we don't we don't know where Fournette's going. I don't know if there's a world. You know, like obviously they're set to release him. They need some sort of situation there to support him. He does have those receivers, I guess. I like it. I like it for the Buccaneers, and it's anyone's game. It's why Chris Collins was saying, Aaron Rodgers, what are you doing going to the AFC East? Go down to the South.